Now we get to talk about the namesake of my YouTube channel. Uh, in particular, a topological space is called Hausdorff. If for any pair of distinct points in the space, call them A and B, you can separate them into disjoint neighborhoods or disjoint open sets, whatever you prefer to think about. Uh, most people prefer to think about disjoint open sets. So the second definition is the one they use, but they're equivalent. So think about it whatever way you want. Uh, the picture here is, uh, imagine you have some points, A and B, existing in some space X. So I'm not even going to draw the space X, just assume it's the ether hiding behind me. Then uh, your space is Hausdorff if you can put some open sets or some neighborhoods, whatever you like think. U and B. And again, they don't have to be like open balls or anything. We're in a topological space, so they might be kind of ugly, but at the very least, you can find open sets U and V that are disjoint from one another. And you might think, uh, isn't that always true? Right? It seems just intuitive that that would be the case. And in metric spaces, that's correct. Every metric space is a Hausdorff space. In particular, you can always take the distance between two points A and B, split it in half, and then there you go, put open balls of that kind of half radius around each point, and they'll be disjoint. However, in a general topological space, our open sets might get ugly, right? So we'll see some examples of non Hausdorff topological spaces. But first, let's see some nice examples. Okay, so I already drew it for R2, but Let's consider for uh, the real line. Okay, of course, you can definitely put open sets around any pair of distinct points. Right. If you want them to be as close as possible, you could use that uh, distance divided by two trick I just mentioned. And similarly, you know, if you went into R3, maybe I get a point along here. Let's say that's one point, and this is some other point. Then, yeah, I mean, R3 is also a metric space. I can do the same old trick, no big deal, and find uh, open balls around each of these points. I guess I'll draw on this little dotted spheres. Why not? And those are definitely disjoint from one another. So there's U and B, there's U and B. OK, so it works in Euclidean space. Awesome. That's where our intuition comes from. So it's good that our intuition has this Hausdorff property. Um, you can also see that the discrete topology on whatever set you want to define, uh, is Hausdorff. The discrete topology, remember, is the topology for which all subsets are open. And so, you know, if you have a bunch of points existing in your space and you declare it has the discrete topology, then not only is every possible subset open, but every singleton is open. In particular, if this is A and this is B, I can consider the singleton set, I guess that's V because it's around B. So V is the singleton set B. U is the singleton A. Those are definitely disjoint, right? We declared in the definition of Hausdorff, you don't consider the case when A equals B, you only care about distinct points A and B. And so definitely those singletons are also disjoint as sets. Cool, and you can do that for any pair, so it is Hausdorff. Um, and then just a side note, most nice topologies you work with are, are Hausdorff. Um, if you ever learn about manifolds, manifolds are cool and they're defined to be Hausdorff. But 
there are some really cool non-house door spaces. For example, I've shown, I've shown this example before. Uh, let's say I have points A and B that are distinct from one another. Uh, with this topology, the open ray topology, where any open ray from some real number to infinity is an open set, uh, this is not going to be a Hausdorff topology because, for example, I could take u equal to this purple set, and I could take v equal to something containing b, right? I need some open set containing b, but it doesn't matter what open set I take. Any open set, say this one, call that v is necessarily going to intersect u, right? Because they're both rays pointing in the same direction. So eventually they're going to they're gonna cross, they're going to overlap. Uh, that happens for any pair of points a and b, for any neighborhoods or open sets containing a and b that you pick. So not Hausdorff. Um, now, since we know the discrete topology is Hausdorff, maybe it's unsurprising the indiscrete topology is not Hausdorff. Remember, the indiscrete topology is uh, the topology where the only open sets are the ones that have to be open, the empty set and the whole space. And this is not Hausdorff because well, if I pick again, let's consider just some smattering of points. Let's say we're imbuing it with the indiscrete topology. Then, if we say, uh, let me draw it up here. Yeah. If we say this is A and maybe that's B, sure, in the drawing they look far apart, but I have to pick an open set containing each. And guess what? The only open set containing A is the whole space. And same for B. The only open set containing B is the whole space. So definitely not uh, disjoint sets. <laughs> you have to choose X for both. Um, another slightly weird one. We don't get to use the cofinite and co-countable topologies for much except for counterexamples. So here we go. Uh, they're not Hausdorff. Uh, so given, let's just make it easy on ourselves and say X is uncountable, because otherwise it, you know, the cofinite and co-countable topologies might end up being the discrete topology and that would be Hausdorff. So let's play it safe and say it's an uncountable set. Then the cofinite topology says all open sets, uh, all the open sets are those sets with a finite complement. And sure enough, if you were to take, let's say we're working in R or something, so x equals R. And again, we'll pick some random points, A and B, distinct from one another. Then if I were to take some uh, cofinite set containing A, and remember cofinite means its complement is finite, so it has to be almost everything. You know, maybe it has like a tiny gap here and a tiny gap here. <laughs> um, and you know, maybe it maybe it misses B. So its complement is finite because it's missing, you know, three points, say. So that's my set U containing A. And then I have to do the same for for B, right? But okay, I have to have some you know, something around B like this. And then maybe I skip a point here and I go off to infinity and I skip a point here and go off to infinity. But even then, you know, here I'm, okay, I'm missing two points. So my complement's finite. Um, maybe I should have been more careful and even skipped A. Right, so I'm missing, you know, three points again. But, you know, even if I was missing a jillion points, a jillion is not as much as an uncountable, an uncountable set. 
So naturally, there will be some place where purple and red overlap. Here, there are a ton of places, but convince yourself that you know, no matter what my purple set and my red set were, if they were cofinite, there's got to be some overlap. You can probably argue that by contradiction or something. And co-countable can be done in a similar way to show it's not half story. All right. Um, and then last but not least, this is an example that breaks people's brains a little bit, and you can't formally define it until you know what the quotient topology is. But uh, for the time being, we'll just say, take my word for it, the line with two origins is something that looks like this. It goes off to infinity in each direction. And you'll call this 0a, 0b. So it's exactly like the real line, but it has two origins. It has two zeros. <laughs> um, and the open sets, the topology you can define on this is, uh, OK, if you have some set that like doesn't contain the origin, then it's open, you know, if it's open in R. So same story. So like that interval would be open. This interval would be open. Take the union of those, and that would be open. Uh, but it starts to get weird once your sets contain one or both of the origins. So how do you define an open set in that case? Well, uh, if you define the quotient topology, which I said I haven't gotten into yet, then um, it's going to turn out that if you take some neighborhood of 0 sub a, say, then it'll naturally contain points that are also in the neighborhood of 0 sub b. In particular, uh, an open set, maybe I'll use the highlighter here, uh, you could say that this is sort of an open set containing u sub a you know, sort of some, some interval from like negative epsilon to epsilon, but it jumps up and grabs the a zero, the a origin. Uh, and then different color, let's do purple. Maybe this is some neighborhood, some like open interval containing zero b. Well, you immediately see the problem. They have some intersection, right? And no matter how small you shrink that epsilon or whatever the size of your interval is, they will have some overlap. So you can't separate. Um, I mean, you can separate any other pair of points. Right? I can separate these two points naturally with open sets. But Hausdorff says you have to be able to do that with every pair of points. And in this case, the two origins are problematic. They cannot be separated into disjoint open sets. All right, so uh, most of the time we won't be dealing with spaces like that. I mean, manifolds are defined so that you specifically avoid that case and you avoid something called the long line. Um, yeah, we like Hausdorff spaces. Um, the indiscrete topology is real ugly. Cofinite and co-countable are pretty ugly. Um, so yeah, most nice spaces will end up being Hausdorff. Thanks for watching.